Hello students. So uh, as we are talking about the statistical mechanics phase transition unit, th this is the particular video in which we are going to talk about the critical indices uh, or they are also called as critical exponents. So let's just uh, go through this uh, this topic. So what do we mean by first of all we, ha we have to understand what do we mean by critical point I think in previous videos it was clear that critical point is basically where the, uh, the two phases exist uh, together or uh, they are coexisting so uh, so you can see that this particular uh, diagram now it is a phase diagram where pressure versus volume is plotted uh, previously we used to plot pressure versus temperature just don't get uh, confused in here so this is the pressure on y-axis and volume is on y-axis whereas all these lines are basically the lines at different temperatures okay so along these lines the temperature is constant on along all the lines the temperatures whatever the temperatures they are they are constant so that is why they are these lines are also called as isotherms the the lines or the curves or the values of pressure and volume at which the temperature is constant okay so this is the curve which belongs to the phase equilibrium okay where which is also tc so along these lines the phase transition is or you can say two phases are coexisting along at the at those values of pressures and volumes at this temperature tc this is the temperature which is greater than tc and all these lines are for temperature less than the critical temperature okay so this is the point which we are talking about as the critical point okay where the two phases coexist okay or they are also called as or you can say in other words that they are they become identical the two phases become identical so <coughs> along these critical points or at this critical point basically what is happening is you know uh, you can think of uh, a situation where the, here uh, the liquid phase and as well as the gas phase are identical Okay, so that is a, that is your definition of critical point that the 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 uh, both the phases, let's say liquid and vapor uh, or gas, both are identical. That means liquid is also like uh, gas and gas is also like liquid. So you can think here the de what will be the density, whether the whether the let's say the water vapor and wa wa liquid water, what will be the density of these two phases very close to this critical point so whether it will uh, it will have density of water liquid water or whether it will have density of gas so that is not uh, clear because we know below this tc we will have the density of liquid water and above this temperature tc we know that the density will be of gas gaseous uh, phase okay density of ve uh, water vapors but what is not clear is what is the density close to this critical point not only density but other properties as well but mainly the fluctuations large fluctuations in density that means very close to it maybe very large density and then suddenly on this side the density is very small on this side again density has some constant value of uh, liquid water but we have no idea as what is happening very close to the critical point and such we can say that such such uh, points can be called as singular points because suddenly you have liquid water density and then suddenly you have gaseous or uh, vapor phase uh, vapor water in vapor phase density so when things are unknown uh, at a particular point or cannot be defined then we call them as a singular uh, singular values or singular point okay and that leads to some of the anomalies in different properties so it is not limited to only density but we can we will also have problems with uh, defining the pressure there or the temperature there uh, 
no sorry not temperature but pressure or you can also have like the density uh, specific heat okay and uh, we'll see you those quantities where the, the anomalies or the discontinuities appear because of this critical points so the critical exponents basically are used to describe the anomalous behavior of physical quantities in the vicinity of critical point so though that is how we are relating uh, the critical exponents to this critical point so typically a c control parameter uh, is temperature control parameter is something which uh, drives the phase transition so which is basically the the key to the phase transition so normally when we have ice we heat it so we are basically changing the temperature so it's like a driving parameter is temperature and so that is what is called as control parameter but you can also have different uh, control parameters like maybe pressure can also be a uh, control parameter but most of the time we, we we talk about the temperature as our control parameter now let's say we have some general physical quantity it can be density it can be pressure or it can be heat capacity which we want to uh, get an va get a value of near critical point so the easiest thing to do or the simplest thing to do is assuming that the psi is a polynomial that means psi uh, is a function of uh, temperature that is uh, tip and that is around tc some temperature around tc how far we are from this temperature tc th on that it will depend okay and it will not be linear dependence but it will be general uh, power law dependence so you can have algebraic equation based on uh, how close you are so maybe you might need a higher order polynomial to define the value of psi very close to the c and then when as you go this might be the even the simpler linear equation can explain and then maybe uh, when you are in comfortably in uh, a one phase then you um, you will have constant value for example so if you have density so water density will be constant at these other values of pressure and volume and then at a uh, higher uh, the vapor uh, density will be also constant if you go uh, very far away from this temperature tc and also when you go very far away from temperature tc on lower side the density will have constant value but very close to this because suddenly here the vapor density is there and on this side suddenly there is uh, water uh, liquid water density is there so in between there will be some power law dependence okay so we'll see how that is and the simplest one we will assume is the linear dependence so uh, so we are considering only one power one term in here we can also have in, in general we can also have multiple terms <coughs> so uh, we assume that the psi is directly proportional to the difference between t and the critical temperature the temperature of the substance and the critical temperature critical temperature is at which the two phases become identical and then there will be some exponent power dependence which is called as the critical exponent and you, you can define it like this so you can if you take ln on both the sides you will get ln of psi and then m times ln of t minus tc and you can take m on other side and when you did say that n tends to infinity okay when n tends to infinity you will and if you apply this limit to this quantity or the ratio of psi and uh, t minus t c logarithm of psi and logarithm of t minus t c with n tends to infinity then that will give you the value of m so uh, we now again one more quantity we define is the order parameter so it is different from your control parameter control parameter is something which def derives the phase transition and like temperature order parameter is basically a measure of the degree of order across the boundaries in phase transition system it normally ranges between 0 and 1 so uh, so what do we mean by order parameter is basically uh, the degree of order so basically when you go from let's say from this point towards the lower temperature that means uh, in liquid water uh, case so what we are saying is below this temperature 
uh, across this boundary so this is our boundary between two phases so below this temperature you know the the liquid water will be well ordered right so it will be like or you can say let's say a crystalline solid is melting across this uh, at this point critical point C so below this TC the solid will be in like crystalline very well ordered structure but then above TC it will be melting so there will be less order so how ordered it is that is what the order parameter defines how ordered the system is and if it is perfectly ordered we can have value of 1 and if it is less uh, ordered like uh, like amorphous crystal let's say amorphous solid so then there will be less order so that you can say that is ideally non uh, uh, ideal amorphous crystal uh, amorphous solid will have zero order so that is what we mean but it does not mean that order only exists in solids it can also exist in water or it could uh, sorry it it can ex also exist in liquid phase and it will have all the liquid kind of properties like uniform distribution of all the constituents and the pressure is uniform everywhere and so on so properties near the critical point uh, let's just talk about what quantity you know here we have defined only general physical some quantity psi now let's talk about particular quantities so for example we have this isothermal compressibility you know the compressibility means uh, if you will take a liquid and uh, or vapor and try to compress it okay so what is the order of compressibility how far one can compress this so it's basically mathematically you can say it is the change in volume with respect to pressure so you apply the pressure and the volume will decrease and how close you can or how how much you can change the volume as you change the pressure as you keep on changing the pressure per unit volume of that with respect to the original volume of the substance and at constant temperature so this is what that is why we have this isothermal compressibility if the uh, so the constant temperature stands for this isothermal okay and it is generated by your symbol kappa so what happens to this quantity you know that if the temperature is larger than tc this quantity is defined as or this quantity is uh, found to be dependent on temperature as some constant multiplied by mod of t minus tc with raise to this minus gamma now this gamma is a is a positive constant but this minus gamma will give you some negative number and this gamma is also an critical exponent for isothermal compressibility and it takes typically the value of 1.1 now you may also have situation like you have the uh, the two cases away from a higher value of temperature than tc and lower value of temperature than dc when the temperature is higher this is what your power law is for isothermal compressibility if the temperature is lower then you have some another constant multiplied instead of a and then you have minus gamma prime here so gamma may not be equal to gamma heat capacity similarly we have heat capacity you know the heat capacity is 1 over mass daba q by daba t so that is the amount of energy required to increase the temperature by 1 degree celsius for unit mass so that very close to the uh, very close to the the critical point will be defined as this that it is equal to some constant again instead of a we are now using here some another constant b again mod of t minus tc raised to this minus alpha so now this exponent is different here so this is the critical exponent for the heat capacity and when the temperature is low you will have another exponent which is minus alpha prime and typically they are not similar but we'll see that what happens when they are similar and they are actually in some cases they are similar so the difference between now uh, another quantity difference between liquid and gas densities and pressure so if let's say rho L is liquid density and rho G is your gas density so that is also given in terms of similar power law that C is uh, C is again another constant and uh, it depends on T minus T C raised to some beta beta is another critical exponent for the density
and beta is typically of the order of 0 0.345 and the pressure so you can also have pressure difference away from so whatever with the pressure critical pressure away from that what is the value of pressure so that also depends on the temperature so that is another constant multiplier d and t minus tc that is the temperature difference away from uh, critical temperature tc and this to delta so delta is the critical exponent for pressure so and that is typically of the order of 4.35 the critical exponents uh, and it was found later that the critical exponents are actually similar for uh, the temperatures above tc and below tc so that means gamma and gamma prime are same alpha and alpha prime are same Another thing uh, to note about these critical exponents are that they are universal. What do you mean by uni uh, universal critical exponents are that they are not dependent on the material. So for any uh, material the critical exponents are going to be same. So delta is always going to be close to 4.35, beta is always going to be close, uh, uh, close to very uh, close to 0 0.345 and similarly the gamma will be clo very close to 1.1 so that is what we mean by universal so they are material independent so rather they are phenomenon uh, dependent or the the, uh, the process dependent that is the critical uh, point where two phases are identical so it is not dependent on irrespective of which material is undergoing uh, through that phase transition or which material is the at that critical point it the values of critical exponents are similar so they have uh, and they also follow some equations or you can say inequalities that is so they also follow this uh, Rishbrook's inequality and Griffith's inequality these are nothing but the relations between these exponents and what it's uh, Rishbrook's inequalities uh, says that the alpha prime plus 2 times beta plus gamma prime will always be greater than or equal to 2 and Griffith's inequality is another way of writing that alpha prime plus beta in bracket this delta plus 1 should be greater than 2 for a given material so so that the good thing or, or the, uh, the uh, significant thing to note here is that you know these constants are are independent of materials so this is something uh, I mean you can think like the melting of ice and melting of uh, iron will have same this gammas and gamma uh, alpha and beta and delta so that is interesting you know that that is something very different uh, to note here okay alright so with this we stop it here for the and I will come back maybe uh, in couple of days with another video on uh, next topic alright so see you there bye